morning, everyone. I'm Zaina Anwar, um, founding member of Musawa and the current um, director of um, Musawa and founding member of Sisters in Islam in Malaysia, if some of you are familiar with um, Sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And happy International Women's Day tomorrow. So I just want to give an early notice. <laughs> so really welcome all of you to this wonderful, very special event for all of us in Musawa. It's our coming out with our first, um, you know, original um, thinking on women's rights in Islam and, you know, right to the jugular vein of the issue of male authority over women. <laughs> um, so this is a launch um, of Men in Charge, Rethinking Authority in Muslim Legal Tradition, and really a day of sharing, discussing the twin concepts of Kiwama and Wilaya. I hope by the end of the day, you're very familiar with that, um, which until today underpins the discriminatory legal framework governing Muslim family law and practice. We're privileged today to have with us nine, one via Skype of the 10 authors of the chapters in the book to share with you the key ideas and insights into the work and how best we can rethink this legal concept of male authority in the context of equality and justice in the 21st century. This is the 21st century, some of us are forgetting. Many of you today may not be familiar with Musawa, the global movement for equality and justice in the Muslim family. Amidst the relentless bad news coming out from much of the Muslim world and the rest of the world actually, we in Musawa would like to believe that we represent hope. Hope for the future of Islam, and what it means to be Muslim today as we reshape and redefine scholarship and activism to bring about an understanding of Islam that upholds equality and justice and the possibility and necessity for reform. Musawa was launched in 2009 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, with about 250 participants from 47 countries, including 30 two countries from the Organization of Islamic Conference attending. It was really a wonderful, exciting, empowering, uplifting to this very day when you think about it, when I think about it, um, of five days of just incredible gathering of scholars and activists together committed to bring about change in the Muslim world. We came together because we wanted to tell the world and we wanted to tell our leaders that we will no longer accept the use of Islam to justify discrimination against women. We made a conscious decision to call this movement that we're trying to build in the Muslim world, Musawa, equality. It is an unambiguous assertion that today in the 21st century, there cannot be justice without equality. And by equality, we do not mean that men and women are the same and must be treated the same. I'm always astonished when people say, oh, is that what you want? You know, We subscribe to the concept of substantive equality, which ensures that women, all women, including Muslim women, enjoy equality in opportunities, equality in accessing those opportunities, and equality in results and benefits. And that the state, our government, is obliged to recognize the differences between men and women and level the playing field and take action to ensure that all laws and policies, even when they are made in the name of Islam, include a gender perspective and uphold equality and justice in substance and in outcomes. Musawa was initiated by Sisters in Islam, the Malaysian Women's Rights Group, that has been engaging with Islam from a rights perspective since 1987, way before the rest of the Muslim world and the rest of the world woke up to the impact of political Islam on women's rights and human rights. The pioneering work of Sisters in Islam eventually generated much global interest in the context of rising conservatism and politicization of Islam and as women's groups in many parts of the Muslim world faced tremendous opposition to their demands for law reform and found themselves even having to withstand the attempts to roll back the rights that they had gained in earlier years. Very often, 
Muslim women who demand justice and equality and want change to discriminatory laws and practices are told this is God's law. It is, dif- it is divine and therefore not open to negotiation and change. To question, challenge or demand reform will supposedly go against Sharia. We can have faith in God and lead us astray from the straight path. We are often accused of being westernized elites, anti-Islam, anti-Sharia, women who have deviated from our faith, our aqidah and our iman are weak. Reports are made against us to the police, to the religious authorities to take action against us, to silence us, to charge us for insulting Islam, to ban our groups. But we will not be silenced or intimidated. As activists, we all know that in order to bring change, we, want, we must, must not be afraid to speak the truth as we see it, to be angry in the face of injustice, to take difficult positions and to be marginalized and condemned. For many of us, it is an article of faith that Islam is just, that God is just. If justice is intrinsic to Islam, as our leaders like to tell the world, then how could injustice and discrimination result from the codification and implementation of laws and policies made in the name of Islam. This is the 21st century. We assert again and again that there cannot be justice in the world without equality. We live in a world today where women's rights are considered part of human rights, where modern constitutions of many Muslim countries recognize equality and non-discrimination, where women's daily realities make them the providers and protectors of their families. The continuing discrimination found in family laws in much of the Muslim world today is untenable and indefensible. There is clearly a disconnect between the realities of our lives today and the discriminatory family laws that govern us. This has to end. 